Hi, my name is Tomasz Poszetek and in this video I would like to show you a functionality that I learned from my friend Daniel Laskowitz. So thank you Daniel for um, sharing this information with me. And this functionality is about assigning a task not only to um, a user in, in Microsoft 365, but actually to a Microsoft 365 group. And then every member of this group, if you configure the group to do that, will get a notification and will be able to complete a task. And that is similar to what we had in uh, SharePoint workflows. Like we were able to assign a task to a SharePoint group uh, and then every member was receiving a task and notification. Um, in Power Automate, you are not always, you are not um, able to assign a task to a SharePoint group. However, if you're thinking about SharePoint, uh, then you're always able to simply um, get members of a SharePoint group, like enumerate them and simply assign a task to every single member of such a group. However, you're not able to assign a task to a SharePoint group as a whole. However, you're able to do that with Microsoft 365 group. Um, and there are a few prerequisites that you need to remember and few uh, and several configurations that you as well need to set up. Uh, also, what is very important, you can navigate to Microsoft Docs, which is very well written. So um, there is a hyperlink below in the description of the video. Uh, the cool thing is about the, the outcomes. Like if you assign a task to uh, one group and uh, you're expecting that everyone has to approve, then in this scenario, it will only wait for a single uh, response from a group. Like a group is, is, um, is treated as a whole. So it's not really waiting for every member of the group to respond, but it's just waiting for a response, for a single one response. If you assign a task to two Microsoft 365 groups and you're waiting for every uh, one to respond, it will wait for one response from first group and one response from second group. Um, in the same scenario, if you assign a task to a group and a user and the workflow would be waiting for every everyone to respond, it will be then waiting for the user and someone from the group. Um, if you assign a group to two, uh, a task to two groups, but you would be waiting just for the first response, then uh, it will be waiting for uh, anyone from these two groups to respond and so on and so on. Like everything uh, around these scenarios is written here uh, under the what to expect when you send a pro request to groups and users. So it's very well documented. Uh, and right now, I want to I want to show you how it works. So let's get down to it. All right. So first, I need to create a group, um, and this is the first thing that you that you have to keep in mind. This group needs to be email enabled. So you could use the email enabled security group, although for these a specific scenario and for this specific purpose, I would highly recommend to use Microsoft 365 groups as they are just much more flexible and it gives you much more, uh, much more um, features that you can use after all. First name it, of course. Secondly, grant or name the approver, the, the, the owners, where is my mode admin? I'll go to admin and then let's get some members. I'll add admin too, because why not? And some more, like I'll grant to Adele, Alex, and Alan. So we'll have like four members. Then the most important thing is the email. The group can be either public or private. This is up to you. I'll set it to private. Uh, you don't need to create a team for this group for this purpose. I mean, you can create if this group is going to be used not only for uh, assignment of tasks, but if this is the case, then, well, the teams is really not needed here. So let's move on. Okay, create a group and close. And then next step is in, uh, is in well, Outlook actually, if not if you're not uh, an Exchange admin, so I will refresh it because I want this group to appear in the list of my groups. And 
all. There isn't, there are even no groups at all right now. Let's let me do this just once again. Right. So there is group approvers that I'm a member of, and uh, well, there are some things that uh, you would, you may want to to set as a configuration. So I'll open this group in a in a new tab. And right now I'll navigate to its settings. And this is something that you would may consider to, you know, to set. So first thing is that what I want to follow in inbox, whether I want to follow everything that is coming or maybe not. Uh, so I'll follow everything so that for every email that that comes into this group i'll get uh, i'll get an email now speaking about some other details first we have to mark this setting to let people outside the organization to email the group because uh, approval emails are going to come from the microsoft email not from the tenant email and also you might want to set up the subscription for every member so that if there is a new email in the mailbox in the share in this uh, Microsoft 365 group, they will be notified, so they will get information about new tasks as well. So these two settings, I highly recommend you. I mean, they are kind of a must, so you, you need to actually to to um, set them. All right, and right now the group is like somehow ready, so I'll create like a very 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 um, easy flow. It will be an instant cloud flow, just triggered. and it will just you know contain two actions so first do assign a task and then to uh, start approval we create approval let's let's do it in two steps and i'll use this um assign um, approve and reject that everyone must approve and let's assign it to approvers so right now i'll find this email or the group here and i will assign it as well to to whom to alex come on let me do that okay um what is wrong with this field alex and then and then approvers oh, yeah that worked and then i don't think i would need to do anything else i'll just say wait for the approval and i'll use this id okay so with that let's save it and and see it running. So let's see what will happen if I execute it. In the meantime, I open Alex's um, Alex's browser and his approvals page. So this is Alex and Alex's approvals. And yeah, come on. And Alex has already this group approval here. Now, as you can see, I have as the owner, I mean as the uh, as a member of the of the group, this is assigned to. And Adele, if she navigates to approvals she will have this group approval present here too uh in receipt of course on the receipt oh no that's weird well there it is right so there is group approval and also uh she received the email that there has been this uh approval assigned to a group 
So with that, she not only got this task assigned to her directly, but as well, she got this notification, even though the task was not assigned directly to her, right? So um, I'll navigate as well to power to Microsoft Teams and to approvals in Teams, just to show you how this type of approval looks in here. So as I open it and I see details, I see that it is spending the response from the approvals group and Alex, right? So now if Adele as, uh, sorry, completes this task, then this task now will show that the approvers uh, have actually completed. I mean, Adele has completed on behalf of approvers. It, it still shows that uh, it is waiting for everyone from the approvers. So unless something changed in how this is considered, like how, how this uh, everyone has to approve, is now uh, reflected speaking about the group, uh, then approval from Alex should complete the whole approval process. Oh, that was a mistake. Should we complete this? Anyhow, let's see, let's see. Well, yes, now it is, it is completed. And well, the downside of this is that there is still this information that there is no response from the approvers, which obviously is not true because there is one response from the approvers. So Adele has approved on behalf of the approvers group. Uh, but the point is um, this was enough to simply complete the approval. So anyone from the approvers group was able to complete it and the whole approval process now, uh, well, looks like or you know shows up as uh, as a completed process. Well, so basically this is how it works. When I switch back to the process itself, you will see that it has been completed, and as well in the responses, I will have all these single separate responses from separate single people. Um, there is no information about the approvers group uh, at all because it somehow is being like resolved into into single single members of the group they have they are being assigned a task uh, and they can respond on their own but there is like no information that this person has been uh, completed the task uh, on behalf of the group or not all right and having that said this is all i wanted to share with you i hope you find this information and i hope that you find this functionality um, quite useful and that you'll be able to use it in your processes because as I said that gives you much more of the flexibility when assigning tasks so you don't need to really control every time uh, every single member and um, uh, and as well like build some sophisticated uh, substitution processes and so on you're only able to you only need to maintain the membership of a group and then assign these tasks on the group levels so I hope this will give you much more peace, uh, much, much, much more of peace of mind and uh, this is some uh, flexibility in your processes. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, I ask you for, well, comments. If you have questions, write them down below the video, thumbs up for the video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, until the next time. So bye bye.